Are Su Wukong and the 16 macaque brothers in Journey to the West? The answer is complicated. For those who don't know, Journey to the West is one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. It is an extremely culturally important book in China, and there are many parts of Journey to the West that cannot be understood or fully grasped without important cultural and religious context. Now, there are actually countless Chinese articles discussing Sun Wukong and the six Yid Macaque that answer this question and explain the six Yid Macaque's origins. However, as Journey to the West is not as well known or widespread outside of China and Asia, there are little English articles or papers discussing this. Thankfully, I was able to access various Chinese papers as well as find some reliable English sources, and in this video, I'll explain what I discovered through my research. But before I start, I need to debunk some common misinformation surrounding Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque. Firstly, I've seen some people say that in Journey to the West, the Six Yid Macaque and Sun Wukong are both born from a stone egg, or even born from the same stone egg. This is not at all true. Sun Wukong was born from a stone egg, but nowhere is it said that the Six Yid Macaque is also born from one. Moving on, many people think that Journey to the West says that Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque are sworn brothers because of this article. This article does say they are sworn brothers, but not only does Journey to the West not say that they are sworn brothers, this article does not claim that Journey to the West says they're sworn brothers. If you read the article, it actually references a paper by Ling Hong Lam. In this paper, Lam dedicates a paragraph to briefly speculating that the six Yid macaque is the same character as the macaque spirit king. Lam states that the six Yid macaque is reminiscent of the macaque king. But again, Journey to the West does not state this. The idea that the macaque spirit king and the six Yid macaque are the same character is just a theory, and not a widely accepted theory in China. The fact that the six Yid macaque and the macaque spirit king both had the word macaque in their name is not particularly remarkable, as a macaque is a type of relatively common real-life monkey, with various species residing in China. Now that we have the misinformation out of the way, what does Journey to the West actually say about the six Yid macaque? As Journey to the West is actually a highly allegorical work and is filled with various religious metaphors and underlying messages and meanings, there are many concepts that are heavily implied or conveyed in Journey to the West that are not very apparent or obvious to Western readers. So, while from a Western reading of Journey to the West it may appear that the six Yid macaque is just some random demon who pretends to be Sun Wukong and tries to steal his life, there is actually much more to the six Yid macaque than that. In China, Sun Wukong and the six Yid macaque are actually widely culturally regarded as brothers or as the same person. Why is this? Well, there is a concept in China of double-mindedness or double-heartedness, in which one self is split or conflicted. If people have two hearts, it means their heart is divided, not focused, on something or somebody. From the Chinese heart in a cognitive perspective, culture, body, and language by Ning Yu. Now, Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque are repeatedly referred to as the two hearts or the two minds. The character used for hearts or minds can be translated as either. And this is what they refer to in Journey to the West multiple times. This is why it is widely believed in China that Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque are two sides to the same mind, and that the Six Yid Macaque is a manifestation of Sun Wukong's dark inner thoughts and literally the evil side of Sun Wukong's mind. So, I'll show you exactly where they refer to as the two minds in Journey to the West. Unless specified otherwise, I'm going to be using the Anthony C.U. translation of Journey to the West, which is considered by many to be the best and most accurate translation, although apparently not as popular as the W.F. Jenner translation. However, for the quotes I'm using, both translations say roughly the same thing. I have linked PDFs to all the volumes of the Anthony C.U. translation in the description of this video. The chapter in which the Six Yid Macaque is prominent in is chapter 58, with the title of that chapter being Two Minds Throw Heaven and Earth into Uproar, One Body Cannot Achieve True Nirvana, this title being in reference to Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque fighting each other. Later, when witnessing their fight, the Buddha, referred to as Tathagata, says to those watching, You are all of one mind, but take a look at the two minds in competition and strife arriving here. With the cultural and religious context of the idea of having two hearts slash minds, it is fairly clear that the Buddha is saying that Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque are one mind that has been split in two. Additionally, the book says, Look at those two pilgrims. Soaring on cloud and darting on fog, they fought their way up to the western heaven, and we have a testimonial poem. The poem says, If one has two minds, disasters he'll breed. Note, when it says pilgrims, it means Sun Wukong and the Six Yid Macaque. Other translations say the two monkeys. Again, 
It is pretty blatantly clear that Xun Wukong and the Six Sigma Macaque are two sides to one person. Lok Ting Chen briefly mentions this in his paper on the consciousness of resistance in the novel The Legend of Wukong. This paper is in Chinese, but I had it and other papers translated through Google Translate. This section is titled Delusion and Original Mind. It says, Journey to the West advocates that only by abandoning false thoughts can one truly become a Buddha. In addition to their own delusions, one of the difficulties for Sun Wukong to cultivate his mind cannot help but mention the six seed macaque. Journey to the West refers to the six seed macaque and Sun Wukong as two hearts, and the six seed macaque who seeks the right path is the core. The six seed macaque who seeks the name is delusional. Now, in Journey to the West, the idea that the six seed macaque is a manifestation of Sun Wukong's dark inner thoughts is reinforced when, after Sun Wukong kills the six seed macaque, Sun Wukong is thus continuously characterized as less violent, symbolizing how he has defeated his dark inner self. Wang Li talks about this in his paper, A Psychological Interpretation of the Story of the True and False Monkey King. Killing with one stick? Note, this refers to when Sun Wukong killed the six seed macaque with his staff, also marks the end of Sun Wukong's psychological conflict. Since then, the ego has completely defeated the ID and continued to slay the demons to extort the Tang monk to the west. From the book, we can find that there was no more conflict between Sun Wukong and Tang Sheng after that, and he no longer had such psychological contradictions. Furthermore, the introduction to the Anthony C. Yu translation of Journey to the West actually gives a lot of context to Journey to the West, and explains many things, including how Sun Wukong and the Six Sid Macaque are two parts of the same mind. It is important to note that Anthony C. Yu was a scholar of literature and religion, Eastern and Western. He was the Carl Darling Buck Distinguished Service Professor Emeritus in the Humanities and Professor Emeritus of Religion and Literature in the Chicago Divinity School. He was a very prestigious scholar and received various awards. Now, another thing to note in Journey to the West is that the six-eared macaque is never actually said to have six ears. The phrase six-eared in his name likely refers to the six roots slash senses and six desires of a person. In Buddhism, the six senses are sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste, and mind. So the six-eared macaque's name refers to how he is an embodiment of Sun Wukong's six impurities. Additionally, the six-eared macaque is foreshadowed in Volume 1, Chapter 2 of Journey to the West. Now for this quote, I'm actually going to be using this Chinese version of Journey to the West. So, here, Sun Wukong says to his master, this, and that translates to, There are no six ears here, only one disciple. I hope that master will show mercy to me and teach me the way of longevity, and never forget the kindness. Interestingly enough, English translations of Jane to the West translate this passage slightly differently. The W.J.F. Jenner English translation of this passage says there is no third pair of ears instead of six ears. Although, saying third pair of ears is essentially saying the same thing as six is. And the Anthony C.U. translation says there is no third party here. However, the Anthony C.U. translation has a footnote that explains how this phrase means a third pair of ears or six ears. The footnote also mentions how this line foreshadows the six-eared macaque. Additionally, Zhang Zhengguo also explained in his paper cultural and psychological interpretation of the image of six-eared macaque in Journey to the West how the six-eared macaque's name links to the six senses. I could not access the full paper, but the abstract explains it. Moving on, in Journey to the West, Sun Wukong and the six-eared macaque look the same, and no one can tell them apart. To try and tell them apart, the Jade Emperor has them looked at through the Imp Reflecting Mirror, more commonly translated as the Demon Revealing Mirror. However, what appeared in the mirror were two reflections of Sun Wukong. There was not a slight difference between their golden fillets, their clothing, and even their hair. Of course, as the six eared macaque and Sun Wukong are two parts of the same mind, it would make sense why the six eared macaque would look the same as Sun Wukong in the mirror. The last thing I want to mention is what the Tathagata Buddha said about the four spiritual primates. But first, I'm going to briefly go through some other academic papers just to support what I've said. The first is... Journey to the West, Interpretation of the Mind Cultivation Process, an investigation centered on Su Wukong by Xie Manxing, who is a professor of the Department of Chinese Literature at the National Shangshan University. He has written 19 general papers, 23 seminar papers, 19 research plans, and one monograph concerning Journey to the West. As you can see, this paper also talks about the concepts of two hearts or two minds, with it being mentioned that the use of two hearts or two minds can be used to more thoroughly explore a character, but that the two hearts must return to the one heart. 
The second paper I want to briefly go over is The Inner Redemption Experience on the Threshold Metaphor of Janice West and Its Textual Implications by Chen Junyer. Junyer also discusses the two hearts concept and how the sixth macaque belongs to the hidden and repressed part of Sun Wukong's personality. And how, by Sun Wukong killing the sixth macaque, the two minds return to one. This paper also goes into the meaning behind the six seed macaque's name and how the six seed macaque was foreshadowed in chapter 2 of Jenny to the West. Now, the last paper I want to go over is the most extensive, so I'll not go over all of the relevant parts. The whole paper is about the relationship between Sun Wukong and the six seed macaque. The paper is titled, On the Relationship Between Wukong and the six seed macaque in Jenny to the West and its Implication in the Text by Hong Hua. Here, Hua quotes, Tong San Zhang, where he talked about how demons are born of the mind in chapter 13 of Journey to the West. And then here is a diagram concerning Sun Wukong's mind cultivation journey. Here's some more about the development of the six seed macaque. And then this passage is interesting because it explains exactly why the Anthony CU translation says third party in chapter 2 instead of third pair of ears or six ears. Why explains that the phrase six ears means that if there is a third party other than the preacher and the learner, the teaching and the true meaning of the Dharma cannot be taught. Hence why Sun Wukong said that there is no third party, or third pair of ears here, to his teacher. There is a lot more information in that particular paper, but it is 38 pages long. If you want to read it, or any other papers I referenced or talked about, I put a link to the OneDrive folder in the description of this video, with the original Chinese PDFs of these papers and the translated PDFs of these papers. There are also loads of other Chinese academic papers about this, including a bunch I don't have access to. Not to mention, there are countless non-academic Chinese internet articles on this as well. Also, you know that article I mentioned in the beginning talking about how Sun Wukong and the six Yid macaque are potentially sworn brothers? That same article has a whole section about non-duality and how the six Yid macaque and Sun Wukong are two parts of the same mind. As I said before, the last thing I want to mention is what the Targata Buddha said about the four spiritual primates. I've seen Western readers of Jane to the West say that Sun Wukong and the six Yid macaque are clearly stated to be of different species. So, the Tathagata Buddha said that there are four kinds of monkeys which also do not belong to any of these ten species. And he includes Sun Wukong and the six Yid macaque here. Note, when he says ten species, that is sometimes translated to the ten categories, and does not mean species in the way that we would think of it in a scientific sense. Now, the Buddha refers to Sun Wukong and the six Yid macaque as different kinds of monkeys, potentially meaning they are different species. However, the Buddha actually has a record of lying in Journey to the West and it is likely that he was in fact lying about everything he said about the four kinds of monkeys. Putting aside the fact that the six-eared macaque being part of Sun Wukong's mind is continuously reinforced and implied throughout the text, a lot of the stuff the Buddha said about the six-eared macaque doesn't make sense. The Buddha said that the six-eared macaque has knowledge of past and future and comprehension of all things. Yet, in Journey to the West, the six-eared macaque doesn't exhibit any of these powers and is previously described as having the same powers as Sun Wukong. The six seed macaque never uses any of his powers that the Buddha claims he has. If the six seed macaque knew the past and future, wouldn't he have known that Sun Wukong would kill him? Why impersonate Sun Wukong in the first place if he knew it would end in his death? As I said, this isn't the only instance of the Buddha lying. There are various other places in Journey to the West where he lies, but the most significant is in Chapter 8, where he describes the four different continents. Here, among other things, he says that the people living in the West continent are neither covetous nor prone to kill, and that those in the South continent practice evil doing, indulging in much slaughter and strife. Sun Wukong himself lived eight to nine years in the South Continent, and his experience living there is described as entirely normal, with no mention of people delighting in evil doing or indulging in slaughter. Additionally, while the Buddha said that those in the West Continent are neither covetous nor prone to kill, the West Continent is where Sun Wukong, Tang San Zheng, and the others experienced the most demon attacks. This continent was in fact the most dangerous for them. It is likely the Buddha has lied in various places in order to gain more power and spread propaganda, linking to how Jane to the West is in part political satire and was a commentary on those in power at the time. Since the Buddha and Jane to the West has a history of lying and everything he says about the six year macaque's power didn't make sense, it is clear he was lying and it is likely there are no four spiritual primates as they are mentioned nowhere else in the book. Unfortunately, the long arm gibbon and the red buttocked baboon probably never existed. Now, after the six-eared macaque is killed, 
Jenny to the West does say, to this day, the species of monkey has remained extinct. This is in the Anthony C. Wu translation, and a similar line is in the W.F. Jenner translation. This line is potentially a narrational continuation of the Buddha's lie. Additionally, this line doesn't necessarily mean that the six-eared macaque is its own species in the way we think of species scientifically. This could just be a fancy way of saying that six-eared macaque is dead, and the word that was translated to species could have different connotations in Chinese. For example, like I mentioned earlier, the lying ten categories from the Buddha's speech about the four spiritual primates is translated into the ten species sometimes. Nonetheless, as Journey to the West is a highly allegorical work, there are issues if you take everything literally, especially if you are reading an English translation from a Western perspective. So, overall, it is widely accepted in China that the Sixed Macaque is a manifestation of Sun Wukong's dark inner thoughts, and that they are two parts to one mind, and this affects a lot of Journey to the West adaptations. For example, this concept is utilised in Volume 14 of Wei Dong Shen's Monkey King. Here you can see Su Mekong kills the six-eared macaque, but he feels immense pain because, as the Buddha tells him, he destroyed part of his own mind that resulted from his dark inner thoughts. Of course, not every adaptation of Journey to the West goes into how the six-eared macaque is made from Sun Wukong or is the same person as Sun Wukong. But regardless, they are still two culturally important characters, one of whom is actually worshipped in some areas, and they are widely culturally regarded as brothers or as the same person, and it is important to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, while pretty much everyone in China is aware that the six-eared macaque is a manifestation of Sun Wukong's dark inner thoughts, it is not well known in the Western world.